Okay, this is how to set up your DX7 radio for use with a standard helicopter. Um, this should work uh, for just about any helicopter that has the standard CCPM mixing. Um, I, this is specifically for the T-Rex 250, but it should also work for the 450 uh, Blade 400, uh, helicopters like that. also works on the uh, Blade CP Pro. Um, any helicopter that has the normal 120 degree swash plate uh, with three servos on it. So first thing you want to do is turn your DX7 on while holding down these two buttons. Okay, And uh, you're going to select a model that is open. Okay, that's a new one there. And then use the scroll button on the side to set up the first options. Select helicopter and you're going to have to hit the clear key. Okay, and what that does is that clears out all the settings. So you got a nothing helicopter entered in here. Uh, trainer switch, not going to use. Throttle recovery, not going to use. Okay, now this is important. Um, Aux 2, not going to use that. Um, I use six channel receivers in my helicopters, so Aux 2 isn't even going to be available. But on the gear channel, what you want to set here is gyro. Okay, and this will be important later. Uh, when we go to set up the gyro screen. Um, swash plate type is going to be three servos, 120 degrees. Um, this is used on all helicopters. Um, T-Rex style heads where you got three servos, uh, 120 degrees apart. Push both buttons on the side here and that will take you into the operation screen. This is the normal screen you, you know while you're flying. Um, and now you're going to hit the scroll down button and the select button at the same time to start programming. Okay. First item that comes up is the dual rate and exponential screen. Now um, not actually going to use dual rates or expo on this uh, but one thing that I wanted to mention is if you do want to set this up um, I usually set both settings to the exact same thing so just in case I flip the switch you can see it's the aileron here and you can switch it from position 0 to position 1 and I usually set those both up to be exactly the same so that just in case I flip that switch you know I don't get a reduction in travel or something weird that I might not be expecting so I'm going to use the button here to get to the next item. That's a servo monitor screen. Um, and you can use this to see what's going on with your helicopter you now as you um, as you move the sticks around, you can see the servos move. There's the rudder moving. There's what happens when you hit collective. So the timer. Um, timer screen on this one uh, I'm gonna set to be about four minutes uh, four minutes is good for the T-Rex 250 and hit select until you see the timer and then hit the adjust button over here until you get down to four minutes okay Programmable mixes, I'm not going to use any of those, so I'll just go through those screens, and on this, this is the one that I have trouble explaining to folks online, so I'm going to go ahead and set this. Um, I like to use the auto set, and there's two ways you can set this up, router dual rate switch, and that would be the 
switch on mine, which is up here, this one. Um, but I don't really like to use that. I like to use the automatic setting. So hit the select button until you get to auto. Okay. When setting up the auto screen, basically it lets you use two different values. Um, one for normal mode and one for you know your stunt modes or your idle up modes. And then you can set up your other one for your throttle hold mode. Um, on my T-Rex, I actually ended up in 79. And 77, that we're just about right. Okay, so hit the select screen until it takes you over to the other side there. Now, on these numbers, this this number corresponds to one of these settings over here. So for normal mode, I want the slightly higher gain value, 79. And then for stunt mode, I want setting number one. So flip that to one, okay. That's all there is to it. And now when you switch uh, your flight modes, this will automatically switch you between the 79 and the 77. Revo mix, I'm um, not going to use any of that. Now here's your pitch curves. Okay, now the DX7 has three uh, pitch curves available. You have stunt two, stunt one and normal okay so on the pitch curve I usually set the idle up pitch curves just to straight across like this and uh, if you just set I and H on all of them uh, except for let's see point two is 50 and point H high is 100 and zero is zero. Stunt one the same way. Um, now in normal mode, you want to bring this up a little bit. So you want to bring this one up to about 35 or so, whatever gives you negative three degrees, negative four degrees or so on your pitch gauge. Then you can just leave the rest of these. It's very important that you leave the rest of the pitch curve after, you know, two, three, and high. You should leave those matched up with the uh, stunt mode pitch curves. That's so that when you switch, when you switch between idle up and regular normal mode, you're probably going to be right about here. And you don't want the helicopter to jump and change the pitch drastically. So make sure that this part of the pitch curve above 2 is the same in all modes. Okay, so now you get to set up your throttle curves. And when you start out, these are set up wrong. So in stunt mode, in idle up mode, you want this end, the throttle curve, probably be 100%. And then I don't worry about these. But I do bring this one up. Now you can bring this all the way up to 100, and then you get a flat throttle curve um, all the way across 100% the whole time. Uh, a lot of people like to set a little bit of a V in it, so you go down to 85, or even to 80 in the middle. And this is really just a matter of personal preference. Um, I personally like to set mine flat, but uh, a lot of people like to set them up with a little bit of a V in them like that and the rest of the points uh, should be fine okay one thing that I want to mention here there's this EXP that stands for exponential and you can have that on or off and what that basically does is put a smooth curve like that and um, I don't know how valuable that is, but if you don't want things jumping around like crazy, um, you can use that. It smooths out the line. And you can see that there. I'll use that when I set up my normal mode throttle curve. So again, stunt mode one. I'm gonna bring this up.
I'm currently running my TRX250 at a flat 90% all the way across. So in order to set that up, all I do is just bring this middle one to 90% and then bring this one down over here. Okay. And leave the EXP off. Okay, now on this one, a good throttle curve, I think, for normal mode flying um, actually starts out pretty high. So I usually will raise this point up and I'll raise it up to about 50. Okay, now you want to raise this one up also. Okay. And then you're going to raise this one also up just a little bit. Okay, now you can see that the line segments have straight parts and then they, you know, angle off. So on this one, I'm going to turn the EXP on and you can see that it smooths out the line just a little bit. Okay. So that should be good for starting out. Um, and if you want it higher, you know, go ahead and adjust those values to make it a little higher. Throughout a hold. I want to turn that on, um, and on mine, I like to use the gear switch. So that's this switch up over here. Um, I've gotten in the habit of doing that, and again, you know, that's just personal preference. Um, that's my habit, so that's what I do. A lot of people like to use, you know, they like to use this switch over here, and that's fine too. So I'm going to leave the position that it's going to send to the throttle servo at minus 5, but you can lower this. Um, you can raise it up to exactly 0 if you want, but uh, I think minus 5 is fine. Okay. Now this is the swash mix screen, and the swash mix screen um, we're going to wait on, and we're going to set that up when I actually have the helicopter turned on. Um, but uh, travel adjust, also same thing. You can use that to eliminate the CCPM interactions and keep the swash plate level all the way through the travel. Sub trim, same deal. Um, I showed how to set that up on my servo setup video. And uh, sub trim you can use to center the servos. Uh, one important thing, don't ever use any rudder sub trim. You'll confuse the gyro. Uh, rudder needs to be centered all the time. Reversing, again, um, we need to have the helicopter turned on to set up the reversing. So, now these, this screen um, is kind of handy if you are using dual rates. I don't like to use dual rates, but you can. Um, you could set up dual rates and have them change automatically when you are in the uh, stunt mode. You know, so you could have a little bit of expo in the stunt mode and you could have less expo or something in the regular mode um, but I'm not going to use those okay one thing I forgot to mention is um, once you activate the throttle hold setting um, there will be a third setting which appears on this screen here and uh, in throttle hold mode I like to use the higher gain value so I'm just going to leave it set to zero but um, keep in mind that setting won't appear until you actually set up the throttle hold setting. Now this is how I'm going to set up the servos on this thing. Um, first thing you want to do is turn on your radio and go to that screen right there. That is the servo reversing screen. Um, also want to make sure that you have your uh, throttle hold switch activated. Don't want your heli to be spinning up. and. Also, put your stick to the middle here. So, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug her in. And I'm going to keep my hand on the battery just in case it starts up or something like that. Uh, just plug it in real quick. Let the gyro initialize. Looks like everything's fine. Uh, it's not going to spin or something like that. So, yeah, the first thing I want to do is 
I'm going to move the collective just a little bit. And now I'm assuming that my servos are not going to go the right way, so I'm not going to move it very far. Okay, what you want to watch for is if the servos are moving together when you move the collective stick. So as I move up, you can see as I'm moving up and down that they are not moving together. Okay, so as I move upward, um, only one of the servos is moving upward. And that's this one right here. So what I want to do is reverse the other two so that as I move the stick upward, all three of them move upward together. So I'm going to go into my radio and find out which ones of those are. Um, one of them is definitely the elevator servo. So I'll reverse that one. And you can see now both of those are moving correctly together. Okay. And the other one is, I believe, the pitch servo. So I'm going to reverse that one. And yep, as you can see, now when I move the collective, the swash blade moves up and down together. Okay, so that's correct. Now I'm going to put my stick back to mid stick. Okay, I'm going to go into the swash plate mixing screen, and that is this one right here. So that's that screen right there. Now, what I want to do is make it so that when I push the cyclic stick forward, these two servos go down and this one comes up. So it looks like that's correct. When I push forward, swash plate tilts forward. So that is correct. Um, and then my left and right, when I go to the right side, Swash plate should move to the right. Okay, it looks like that is also correct. So I've got the left and the right correct. And you should not need to move the pitch adjustment at all because remember we set up the collective to be operating in the correct directions already. So it looks like I had everything correct. Now, if one of those things was backwards, but I would go into my screen here and change. See, you've got the aileron and elevator numbers. Now, if one of them was backwards, I would just change that from plus to minus, whatever it was. So, on this one, it happened to be right. But, um, yep, that's how to fix it if you're going the wrong direction. Very, very simple on those. Um, there are a lot of questions about this on the forums, and you know, this is really, really simple to get right. Um, if you use the method that I suggested, um, checking your collective movement first and doing your reversing, and then go into your swash mix screen and get your aileron and elevator set correctly. So uh, that's it for setting up the DX7 uh, with the T-Rex 250 or any other helicopter. Um, very simple. Thanks for watching.